When it comes to picking a starter ship in Star Citizen, one of the most valuable traits on offer can be versatility, the ability to flex into different playstyles to figure out what suits you most so you can lean into that for your first in-game ship purchase. And that's where the space pickup truck that is the Nomad pulls up and invites you to consider, does the in-game performance of this ship meet that need? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Consolidated Outland Nomad, which is described on the Star Citizen website as a starter ship. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split into 5 sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. And we'll start the tour of the Nomad by approaching from the back. Right at the rear there's a button which allows the cargo bay to deploy. This is particularly useful as there's a ramp which if you're at ground level lets you hop on and hop off potentially with a ground vehicle. To get into the ship, you access via a hatchway with a ladder on the left or port side around the midships. This takes you up into the rear section of the Nomad. There's a handy window to see your cargo out the back, as well as a cubby for component access. There's a handy toilet area. Not sure I'd keep my toothbrush in there. and then another storage bin. Moving forward into the middle section of the Nomad, there's the sleeping area, complete with bed, and of course a nice plant in the corner, and then on the opposite side is a food preparation area. There is even a small pop-out chair for those who prefer to eat in comfort. And then right at the front is the cockpit. Armament on the Nomad comes in the form of three size three slots. By default that's a gimbal equipped with a badger repeater. There's one weapon under the nose and two at the top of the ship at the rear. Whilst the top weapons look like a turret, it's actually two distinct slots. With the stock loadout, the capacitors drain fairly quickly, but also recharge quickly, and the size 2 weapons do a fair amount of damage to smaller targets. In terms of other ordnance, the Nomad carries 8 size 2 missiles, which pack a fair punch against smaller, fighter sized craft. Defensively, the Nomad is equipped with three size 1 shield generators, which is a little unusual. They're significantly weaker than the size 2 shield generator, but having three makes the Nomad a little more tanky than some of the dedicated light fighters, which often only have two. Putting that all together into a Nomad shaped package, and you have a ship that can kinda do okay in combat against low end NPC opponents. The Nomad is a little more forgiving in taking damage than some of the other starter ships, and does enough to let a new player try out ship to ship combat to see if they enjoy it. The combat performance really isn't up to the standard of a dedicated fighter, but it helps to keep remembering that as a starter ship, it's more about introducing to the gameplay loop rather than being top of the food chain, and the Nomad makes that introduction just fine. From the cockpit right at the front of the ship, visibility in the Nomad is pretty good. 
There are windows above and to the sides, as well as somewhat unusually below, which really helps when landing. There are a couple of cockpit struts, but they don't really cause a problem. In terms of handling, for a space pickup truck, the Nomad handles surprisingly well. The SCM speed of 180 meters per second feels really comfortable, which is helpful in a starter ship for a pilot potentially just learning to fly. At those SCM speeds, turns can be fairly tight, maneuvers can be made fairly late if required, and braking performance is forgiving. But it's possible to push the top speed up to a maximum of 1171 meters per second, which really helps to cut down travel time between locations. Again, a useful feature in a starter ship that is potentially making a lot of journeys. The stock quantum drive is the expedition, which is a little less helpful, prioritizing range over speed. With the stock drive, the Nomad can get around the entire Stanton system, but swapping to a faster drive highlights the limitations of the onboard quantum fuel stores, which is a little less ideal. But then, the Nomad is just a starter ship? Hmm. Thankfully, the Nomad is really cheap to run. Across rearming, refueling and repairing, you're probably looking at 1 to 2000 Alpha UEC for extended use and ordinarily much, much less. And there are plenty of options for earning that back. There's low-end combat contracts, already discussed, which the Nomad can manage just fine. Then there are box delivery contracts at different levels of risk depending on the confidence of the pilot which again, there is ample space for the Nomad to cover with the cargo bay at the back. And that cargo bay could be used also to run some basic trading. At 24 SCU, it's kind of just big enough to potentially have some profit margins in the region of 25,000 credits per hop. Which isn't huge, but for a starter ship it isn't bad either to find out if you enjoy hauling cargo. But you don't have to just put boxes in that cargo bay. With the addition of the rear ramp when deployed, the Nomad can carry ground vehicles, most importantly including the Rock Mining Rover, which with a cheap rental price can make the combination with the easy to fly Nomad actually a compelling money making option for a new player. In terms of loadout changes, surprisingly, I wouldn't change anything on the Nomad, not even the awful Quantum Drive. And that's largely because this is likely to be a stepping stone ship. So for a new pilot, I'd recommend keeping that Alpha UEC to buy the next ship based on what you learn from flying the Nomad. And that's the strength of this ship. The introduction to this video talked about versatility being one of the most important traits of a first starter ship in Star Citizen to help a new player work out what they enjoy doing and then go further down that path to explore it. You could try combat, try boxes, try mining or try exploring and the Nomad has that personality that you just grab your ship and head out to do it. The somewhat forgiving 4 minute reclaim timer helps too while still learning the ropes. It's easy to learn, easy to fly, and there's plenty of room in the back for activities. The Rock Mining Rover is a natural partnership, with one of the easiest routes to get aboard, and even the option to lower the ramp on your way out with a handy button by the window. The interior of the Nomad wants to make a statement, with the bright teenager orange for the youngsters, and a plant for those more worldly wise. In the cockpit, there is even a Brit button, which presumably transforms your Nomad into a charming, self-effacing, well-mannered kind of ship. There are however some drawbacks. The orange consolidated outland hood can be confusing, especially when trying to work out if you have a valid route to a quantum travel destination or not. Sometimes loading cargo into the cargo bay, if the system happens to load big boxes, can bug out and make the whole thing refuse to sell, but also refuse to move the boxes, so you're stuck with some very expensive decorations preventing you from using the cargo bay. And naturally, if you're flying around the verse, having your rover or cargo open to the interested eyes of other players relies somewhat on their good nature not to be tempted to relieve you of said cargo. Which all kinda brings us to price. 
With a starter pack, the Nomad comes in at $95, which is on the more expensive side of getting into the game. You do get a bit more for your money in terms of the components aboard, the interior environment, and critically that big cargo bay. But the big challenge is that the Cutter comes in at $60 with a game package, which is considerably cheaper and does most of the same stuff as the Nomad. It doesn't do it quite so well, the Nomad is much more comfortable, but the critical element is the considerable price gap between them. That's especially notable because they are both starter ships, they're to get you started in the verse, rather than necessarily carry you through your entire journey. Naturally, the Nomad is purchasable in-game for a price of 950,000 Alpha USC, but unless you're in love with the Nomad, that's probably not the wisest spend you could make, with similarly priced ships in each of the major gameplay loops coming in at around or just above that price point. So the verdict is probably, unless you really like the consolidated Outland style, the space pickup concept, or you're happy to spend a little bit more cash for a more comfortable in-game environment, the Nomad is great, but probably a skip in favour of something cheaper or more bespoke. But do you agree? There may be a lot of Nomad lovers out there, so I'll be interested to read your thoughts in the video comments. If you enjoyed this video, you might press the like button to help me understand what videos to make more of in future, and if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you might like to do that too, so that YouTube knows to show you more videos like this in future. But otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.